If you've already searched through other videos, most likely you've learned this technique to pause the game. Adjusting the time scale is the easiest way to pause the game, but it's not something I'd recommend, and here's why. If your pause menu has any animation and you set the time scale to zero, these animations won't play. You can see why that would be a problem. Here's a cool way to work around that. In this project, I have a simple setup, a character with a character controller, and she's automatically running. And if I press spacebar, she'll jump like this. If you'd like to see how she's programmed, take the time to do that now. I also have a gremlin set up here, and a pause button that doesn't really do much right now. Since I can't offer you these assets, this video is to help you create a setup like this of your own, not to recreate everything perfectly. Since changing the time scale to zero freezes all the animations in the pause menu, the alternative is to freeze each individual game element. I'll show you how to do that with a few simple lines of code. To do this, open the script that we were just looking at. If you've named the script something different, it doesn't matter. But create a public static float called game speed. The reason why this is static is because in the future, other objects will access it. So any object that you'd like to freeze from the script, you'll need a reference to it at the top like this. You'll need a reference to the game object and the animation controller. So I'm going to freeze the main player and the gremlin. You'll need a reference to the pause menu object as well. And it's good practice to parent all the objects in the pause menu to one empty. So when you enable and disable this empty, it looks like this. I'll call this empty pause controller. And this is the object that I'm going to attach to the main character script. Now back inside the main controller script, write the git component lines for the animators under the start function. And create two functions, one called paused and another one called unpaused. Under the pause function, write game speed equals zero, and then write pause controller dot set active true, and under the unpause function, write game speed equals one, and set the pause controller to unactive like this. Any object that has an animator controller like this is quite easy to freeze. I'll start with the main player. In the pause function, write main character dot speed equals zero. This is a reference to the character's controller, and this is how you would usually pause an animator controller. But in this situation, I'll write main character dot speed equals game speed. This makes things more efficient. And to pause the gremlin, I'll use the exact same code like this. Now save your script and attach all your game objects to it like this. Under the pause controller slot, attach your pause controller. And under the main character and gremlin slots, attach your game objects that have the animator controllers like this. Now you just need to call these paused and unpaused functions from another script. Now select the pause button and create a 2D box collider and set the trigger right here. This makes it possible to use the game object as a button. So create a script on this button and inside the script, replace the update function with on mouse down. Inside here is where I'm going to call the pause and unpause functions. I'm going to use the public static game speed variable like this. So this function is to pause the game and this one will unpause the game. First, reference the main character game object like this. And now to call the main character paused and unpaused functions, I'll send a message from the pause menu to the main character like this. Make sure that this word matches this and this matches this. Save the script and attach the character controller in this slot. I also have an animation controller attached to this button with three animations, idle, paused, and unpaused. So back in the script, I'll play these animations inside these if statements like this. So now save the script, and you can see that everything works. But if you have a game object that relies on real-time physics like this, you'll see that the animation freezes, but the character is still moving. So you'll need to pause the character controller in a different way. So back in the script, you can see that the character controller is being moved by these lines of code the vertical velocity and the character.move. You simply have to times these lines of code by the game speed like this. So here's what everything looks like. And here's what the script looks like. I also want to show you that it's possible to freeze your 2D animations in the same way, using the same lines of code like this. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks and take care.